We come now to our time of exhortation before we confess our sin. <clears throat> and our passage this morning is from Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 15 and 16, which say, I've seen everything in my days of vanity. There's a man, there's a just man who perishes in his righteousness, and there's a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness. Do not be overly righteous, nor be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? This may seem like an odd passage to focus on in an exhortation before we confess our sin, especially in the times that we live in. It doesn't seem like there are very many people in 2023 who are struggling with being overly righteous or overly wise. Uh, what does that mean? What does scripture mean here when, it's, when it talks about being overly righteous or overly wise? Shouldn't we strive to be as righteous and as wise as we can? Well, there's a kind of righteousness and a, a kind of uh, wisdom that can be a sin. And this passage is not, in fact, speaking about true wisdom or true righteousness, but instead it talks about destroying yourself in pursuit, in a vain pursuit of appearing righteous and wise. We can see what this looks like in the Pharisees. Jesus condemned them for being so concerned about their appearance of righteousness that they would literally go into their spice cabinet and get the dill and the cumin and the mint and they would tie the tenth of the spice um, just to prove how holy they were, just to prove how, how righteous they were. Um, but at the same time, Christ says they neglected the weightier matters of the law. Pharisaism is ultimately driven by vanity. It's a desire to have others look at you and to be impressed by your righteousness, by your high standards, by your excellent theology, uh, by how well-educated you are or your children are, by the complete and apparent lack of any faults in your perfect life. This reminds me of this odd phenomenon, I'm sure some of you all have seen this, um, of, of almost nearly every time I go out in public, and the first time I saw this, I was in an airport, um, I think it was in, in uh, San Francisco, this was like maybe 10 years ago, and I'm in an airport, and I look over and this woman has a phone, and she's making these duck lips, and she's, she's getting the light and the angle just right, and is taking a picture of herself for her Instagram feed. And, I, and I'm sitting there looking at her, and I'm looking at everyone around and going, do, do we see what this, like how, isn't this absurd? Um, but she was oblivious. She was, it, she, it was just all about her and her picture being perfect. Um, and, and what she cared about was her social media followers seeing how perfect and flawless she was in this, in this angle with this lighting. And she's totally oblivious to what everyone else around her was seeing. Um, it's ridiculous, and it's something I see all the time now. Um, again, this was like 10 years ago. Now I see it, I mean, literally driving to the grocery store, I'm watching these young girls walking down the street taking pictures of themselves, and it's, uh, it's ridiculous. Um, so all, all, that matters, uh, all that mattered to her and all that mattered to these, these strange girls out in the wild um, is that, uh, is that is what the Instagram followers see. Um, they, the, the, those Instagram followers who can't see the broader context of the ridiculousness of the, that situation, of that picture. She just wants them to see this glamorous picture. Uh, the funny thing about all of this, or, or maybe not so funny, is that this is exactly how we look to God when we get caught up in virtue signaling and pharisaism. Uh, this, this, this tendency we have to try to appear wise and virtuous to everyone else. God is standing there watching you like I was with this, this woman in this airport, bend, watching us bending over backwards to carefully uh, put out this appearance of righteousness. But he sees, the entire, he sees the entire context. He sees the real story of what's really going on. He sees your heart, and he knows the sin that you've carefully hidden from view. 